Hey, what's poppin'? Uh, 007, the Gemini Scorpio podcast. Hey, you gotta... We back. No, you, we you back. gotta leave the show this time. We Go ahead. We back. We back. Thank you for tuning in. We are now on episode 007 of the Gemini Scorpio podcast. You are... You sound like yes, a fucking... Yes, sir. Like an ad or something, a commercial. Thank you for listening to the Gemini Scorpio he podcast. He asked me to lead, and then he wants to criticize how I lead. Like All you do is do criticize, me. criticize, All criticize. You, period. What movie was that? Anybody remember? Uh, mm -mm. You don't remember that? Mm -mm. Criticize, criticize. That's not, it, was that that's uh, not you? I thought that was you. I didn't know that was, was that. Was that wasn't um, the shit with Tyrese? Was it? No, nah, that wasn't it. No, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, Yo, when sorry. we watch, when we uh, listen to this episode, we are gonna remember what movie that was. You gonna remember? Cause I still don't know what the hell you're talking about. You really don't remember? It? Like you just criticize. Thank you for coming to the Gemini Scorpio podcast 007. 007. Where we at with it? Uh, I'm about to look. I'm about hey, to babe. find this shit, man. Hey, baby, you really up? about to find out right now? Can we just get to potting? Oh, now you like it. Last week you ain't like it. Men are like pod. Men are like pod. <laughs> All right, boom. So what's happening, babe? Oh, he really want to find this movie. We can't even start oh, in it's, peace. Uh, it's Django. <laughs> That's why. I didn't even really like Django. E 11. Listen. Oh, my God. I can't show it to you. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> he knew exactly where to find it because that's his ass. <laughs> you ungrateful sons of bitches. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he just criticized. criticized. I, didn't like, I didn't even like Django like that. What? Yo, yeah, yeah. First first of all, you said fucking great set actors. it off. It's great actors in it, but I didn't like Django like that. I don't like you, movies I, like I, that. I challenge your movie selection. Cause first you That's said fine. set it off and Queen and Slim was the equal, which was I didn't not. say they were equal. I said they give me the same like leg like like that black popular legendary film kind of thing going on that's what i said no anyway but i don't like django because i just don't like movies like that i think they had great monumental moments in it i thought they had great actors in it but i don't like watching movies like that period. okay all right I, mean, I can't be upset with that right so all you do is fucking criticize 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the name of the episode already. Right. Because <laughs> like, that's all his ass do all day long. All right, nah. Criticize, criticize, criticize. What you talking about, Shorty? What I'm talking about. What's up? What's Yo, because you told it? me um you was like, I always want you to go first. But I think last time I went first. So what you talk what's your what's your topic that you've never so prepared for? Before we even go to that, we don't have any clothing on from different brands today. We're not shutting up this, so nobody look at that because we're not getting paid. Period. You then don't you see go it. then you go to that school? Oh, you're getting a little why? Right. Right. <laughs> don't don't make your fucking titties jump on camera. All right. Boy did his muscle. So, but what I will say, the one thing I will shout out today. So I got my girl waist trainer. It's Sunday, so you know I'm waist training in the crib, snatched waist all 2020 because I'm coming out the play 2020. Yeah, hit you feel what the fuck going on? Do it again. No, no, no. All right, exactly. Yeah. So you know, gym fits still on the body. I got my popular waist trainer and it's so sleek it's so cute you zip it up zip it down um i do not wear waist trainers under clothes i wear it when i'm chilling in the house but this is so sleek that you can and it's so nice it got me snatching it right 2020 i'm coming to play gym fits on a body as you know what the fuck is good j hill nothing how you been babe you all right yeah my that's probably loud as shit in the mic too <laughs> and you gonna do it again <laughs> Sorry, I thought it would sound cool. Hope you got, hopefully we can actually enhance that part. I like that, <laughs> like little chimes and things while we're recording. Get it gone. Bow. So, yeah, so let's get into it. Um, what I wanted to talk about today. You don't even know because you never, you never ready. <laughs> no, I am ready. Like I do and I don't. So one thing that dawned on me recently as I was, you know, we have it in a trending topic, so I'm not going to go too far down the list and I'm going to wait till we get there. But a question that came through listening to certain topics, when do people actually take action to change things that have become a fad like mental health, social anxiety, um, you know, not promoting violence and drugs and music or like these things when does it become action like what how, how many times is somebody going to say like i don't know i have social anxiety and social anxiety or you know i'm suffering with mental health mental health like when are people going to start actually doing the work what is the work so what i mean by that is you know we're going into 2020 mm -hmm. and i see a lot of people just talking about these 
you know, quote unquote, toxic behaviors, toxic things. And of course, it's 2020. So everybody's like, you know, 2020, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But are people aware of the steps that letting things go, leaving things behind, changing your lifestyle, doing the work even consists of? What are some things that you put in the work or how do you put in the work to change some changes that you have? Ba, 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 ba. I wouldn't really give you gunshots for that, but uh, I, <laughs> it's like, nah, nah, I nah. That was a, a very important question. It was a very important question. Uh, I think, um, what, what are some steps I'm taking? What are some things that you could give even advice to that has steps to actually take? I can give advice to you. Uh, or that you have done, or maybe you have, you know, your own rituals, remedies, cures, tactics to actually, well, I actually don't know. make I, some changes. Do you make changes? Or when you think you make changes, are you really making changes? So are when, you suppressing? Uh, when I'm making go. changes, I think I'm just doing it. I, it's nothing that I've I've learned. I think it's just a a constant practice. Like for okay. example, of not getting too emotional invested in something. Okay. Emotionally invested in something. For example, uh this this aspect or this this idea of gaining respect or somebody not respecting me. So a lot of times I would get in trouble uh, or lose opportunities because I feel like the respect wasn't there. So going mm -hmm. forward to not lose those opportunities, I would try not to uh, put a emotional connection on a relationship that shouldn't be emotional connected emotionally connected in the first place. So, mm -hmm. like, if somebody disrespect me, instead of taking it as being disrespected, mm -hmm. I'll take it as it just is what it is. That right. makes sense. Right. So, is it is what it is. So, that's just accepting. That's more like an acceptance thing. Yeah. Like just acceptance. Being, so, having, so, to practice acceptance is a practice. Basically, you have to con continuously, like, accept things for what they are. Right. And that, doing that is, like, that, stepping back and just... Accepting, accepting it that one but most importantly is not having the expectation okay so if if i don't have the expectation of somebody tr giving me respect um if somebody if i don't have the expectation of them looking at me a certain way mm -hmm. when they don't do that i don't be disappointed right right if that makes sense right so hmm so I guess, all right, so my biggest thing, so uh, something that I can say for myself, I should say. So I personally just have a hard time letting things go. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been trying to, and that's even small and big things. Like sometimes things will bother me. And I don't like to say I hold grudges, but like I hold grudges. Like I'll sit on them for a long time, even when, you know, I'm supposed to be technically over it. But again, you can't really tell somebody how fast or tell your, even yourself how fast you should get over. You can't put a right? time frame. Right. Oh. But what happens is a lot of times I will sit with that. So something I've been doing to like let go, like I like you said, I sit and analyze the, the issue and mm -hmm. I sit with myself and say, why is this bothering you so much? Mm -hmm. And what are you holding on to? What is it reflecting to you that is like, I cannot let this thing go. Right. And of course, like you said, you get acceptance. And then once you get acceptance, you from there are able to say, okay, I'm fine with this now, right? So I definitely understand that. But something that I'm just trying to figure out is I just don't see a lot of people doing the work. Like, so for example, like, and, and me included, like with certain areas as well, right? But I think that like when we're really going through something, and like I said, I'm a person on the side, like when we're really going through something, like for example, I fucking hated the holidays this year. Not this year, like all the time. It didn't really dawn on me till this year where I was like, oh, I really fucking hate the holidays mm -hmm. because it's a constant reminder of my own family issues and things that I go through with my own family. So we had a rough Thanksgiving. We had a rough Christmas just because my attitude was not in the Christmas spirit. Like, so I literally said to myself, so what do you have to do to get through this? Like, when do people say, you know what, maybe I need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. or maybe I need to take the step to make a call to a mentor or maybe I need to find a mentor or and not just say I'm going to find a mentor, but actually 
request or look for mentorship mm -hmm. like you know what i mean or when do i go see a therapist when it when is the right time for me to go see a therapist when is the right time to really say like you know some things i might just cannot shake by myself but when do people start doing the work mm. so that was that was your your breaking point or that was your when you recognize you needed to start to do the it work was, it was one of those things where it's just like i don't know how to shake my holiday blues which ultimately means I don't know how to shake my family's history. Mm. And once you get to that, then you have to go deeper. Well, what is it about your family history or these things that prompt you to hate holidays? Then you dig deeper. Well, these moments caused me to hate the holidays or hate certain things. So now I'm here. Now I know these fine details. What do I do about it? What, what do I, I do about it? What you going to do? Um, so I made a list and it's not my 2020 list. This is my right now list. The first steps I always do is I do have a uh, quote unquote mentor. She's more like a big sis, but a very knowledgeable uh, older woman in my life that I do take a lot of, you know, guidance from. So I made that call. Um, and then she gave me a list of therapists to talk to their mild therapists. It doesn't mean like you have a issue or you're crazy or these things, but somebody to who's actually licensed in skill to help you shape and mold your future of accepting the holidays and finding that happy place back in the holidays or whatever it is for you. So because I'm very proud of actually, you know, taking steps to do the work, what I don't like to see is a lot of I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And I keep deciding like that's why it's so hard for people because people don't know how to go do the work. So my mm -hmm. question to you is I'm confused as hell. So but you confuse that. Because I feel like I said the same thing to you. What? About what? About the the process of saying I'm going to, which is nothing wrong with saying I'm going mm -hmm. to, but I remember let's take it back to mm -hmm. I don't know what episode, but you was like, I'm a um you was like, I'm gonna start working out after mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're saying the same thing now. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is, mm -hmm. even though that's fine, how do you what are ways that somebody can say that, mm -hmm. but what's the right way to say it? Because um, I feel like you so, said the same exact thing I was saying, but right. clearly I didn't say it in a way for you to understand it that way. So what I think it is, is people have to decide that they want the help on their own. Like nobody can tell you that you need to go ahead and get help, right? Mm -hmm. So my first step to you, even let's go back towards the gym wise, as you can see, I'm sitting in my trainer, yeah. making my steps, okay? Oh yeah, so, pause. Excuse me. I'm, I'm proud of you. I love the fact that you was like, uh, um, these are steps that I'm taking right now. Yeah. I fuck with that. Thank you. So for your shady ass answer. Shady? I was um, <laughs> oh, wow. So I'm just joking. So all that to say is, one, I don't, I think people have to make the choice to make their selves go get this help that they need or get assistance in the way they need, right? So one thing, remember I brought up to the gym to you, I was like, yo, it's hard getting in a gym by yourself. When I'm down there, I'm bored, I get sidetrack i need a trainer that was when i decided like i needed help did i go out getting it yet no so that's on me but i don't really think i think people can suggest for people to do a lot of things mm -hmm. but it's really up to the person to go do the work right, right. so even if you suggested it like i might have just not agree with you me personally i didn't think i needed you to tell me to go get in the gym i really needed help getting a trainer so like how my mentor did she gave me three you know a list of three four therapists if you would have gave me a list of three four trainers, trainers we might have had a better conversation because i think that don't criticize 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 you find solution 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 okay. when you present a solution to someone you're no longer saying hey you need to do this as a critique but you're giving supporting documents like here let me help you okay. do this it's so not, that so you you're move not, forward it, it goes from pointing a finger to actually feeling like you're trying to help yeah like like here, here i got you like let me hold your hand with this like i know you're struggling with this so let me hold your hand you get what i'm saying Bet. so all that again to say i think that we have to do the work. And when we also, again, to answer your question, a lot of people don't see their need until they really feel their need, right? So me, I'm not big and I'm not, you know, I am I look great, so the gym is not my first priority. Right. But my first priority is my happiness. So if I noticed that the holidays had me in like this weird, uncomfortable, emotional state for the last long ass holiday, so the last two months, then I'm like, okay, like I can't be in these states for two months on and off because I'm dealing with an unhappy part of my life that I'm carrying on. So now it's time to take steps to unwind and really 
get to the core issues of what it is that bothers you so much in whatever instant it is, even if it's not mine, it's anybody's like, why, why does this thing bother you so much? Let's get to the bottom of that. And what steps do you take? Me, because I've been making steps now and not 2020, I just wanna encourage anybody to let's just start moving forward. So, Baby steps, little steps, but let's just not talk about it, not write write the list out. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's take these steps to do so what what's important solution? to us. Like, how, how do you, like, because mm -hmm. it's, you made your steps, but what are their mm -hmm. solutions? Who's solutions to Like, because you were saying that you don't like people like, the question was about when do you, you actually start to move into into it and not just saying you're going to do it when right. do you start to make those steps right so what are the solutions to them that the people to the people who are just saying they're going to do it mm -hmm. what, what can the, what can the solution be for i them? just think that if you're feeling unhappy with something that's your solution the minute that you feel i'm unhappy with this make step forwards don't sit on it don't say, you know, I'm not, I'm unhappy with it today, but tomorrow you're happy over something else. So you forgot about the times because what will happen is it just keeps coming back. And that's something that I've been noticing. Like, you know, I thought I could get through holidays like over the years and think like, oh, it's just a part of my life that, mm -hmm. you know, that I just have to deal with. So every time I ho I ho the holidays come around, I'm in this funk and, you know, I'm in this spirit and um, I'm like, oh, but the holidays will just pass. So like, you know, Thanksgiving will pass, Christmas will pass, New Year's will pass, guess what, on the regular life. But what happens is these seasons come back again, and it's the same thing with everything in your life. Everything comes back again, no matter how many times you try to suppress it, no matter how many times you, you, know, you walk past it, it will bury itself and then it will unravel itself in the same frequency of your life. So I'm just saying, you know, something that I'm learning is don't suppress the unhappiness feeling, even if you feel it once. Get to the core of it, deal with it, figure out the steps through resources, whether you need to ask somebody, whether you need to Google some answers, whether you know somebody who might just be knowledgeable or going through it like you, find a step to change that unhappiness so it does not become a pattern where it stays with you longer than it needs to. Bow. Okay. So um, while we on holidays, just a little freestyle. Uh, when the hell are you supposed to take your fucking Christmas tree down? Um, my Christmas tree is staying up till March. What? I like the lights. Oh, everybody knows the Christmas tree stays the fuck up. It goes up right before Thanksgiving. Um, this was actually the first in March. It's like what maybe the end, maybe the end of February, but March. Give me my sprite out there. I know that some people take it down like around MLK weekend. When is that? Uh, January seventeenth. God, he's supposed to take that out. No, uh, the Christmas the, tree stays the, up. I love the lights, and the season doesn't change. For, right after Christmas, let's take it down. No, Jay been trying to hint to take the Christmas tree down for days, and I'm really irritated by it because I'm not. Wow, they just want to throw my Christmas tree away. This tree was hard work to put up, and we only get it one time a year. And some of us like the lights. I don't like the holidays, but I love lights. Let me keep my Christmas tree up. It makes me happy. All right, so we gonna. I think <laughs> we had to put that on on the ground. What would you like, like to take the Christmas tree down? I mean, we could take. Honestly, I don't care. Like, just be honest, like, whatever you want well, to do. Well, let, let my shit rock down. But some people don't like it up, even, like, when it comes to lights. Y'all come over to my house in February, and y'all keep telling me to take my Christmas tree down. Y'all got to go home. Yo, we need to, we need to get a house, because the people upstairs, oh, my God, that shit be pissing me off. They right. Don't sit down for shit. They right. Be running rapid. Yo. But, um. So my question <laughs> is, the question I wanted to talk to you about was, <laughs> what? It's, no. it's funny. No, Alex said, ask him, did he take his down from last year? <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> no. Some oh. people, you know, it's oh, you crazy. Still got your wow. You know, it's crazy. Round type Some shit. people keep, so like, you know, I be, you know, my goal is like to have, like right now we have a nine foot tree, but my goal is to have, when we have a big house, I want a big ass tall wide tree and it's going to stay up all year round. Okay. It's not going to have like the Christmas stuff on there out of season, but it's going to be up. Okay. All right. So I think, um, hopefully question. it's in the hills in LA somewhere. <laughs> my, my question does it bother you <laughs> what i wanted to talk about was what the, you got the roles of a stepdad first of all when is it okay to when is it okay to um <clears throat> say your stepdad is that the man's role mm -hmm. is that the mother's role mm -hmm. is that the child's role that's mm -hmm. my first question mm -hmm. so when is it okay to be like okay that's my stepchild 
Woo. Well, since in terms of stepchild, it really doesn't come till after marriage when the actual name is titled. But of course, we're in our society where, you know, relationships, you know, form and you go along and, you know, we automatically start calling each other my wife or my husband before that time because that's where we're leading towards. We just aren't there yet, whether it be financial reasons or whether it just be that, you know, we're still building towards that, but we're, we're right about here, right? So to say that, um, I think that, turn, like, organically. Can you turn it down a little bit? The echo. So I think organically what happens is the bond builds mm -hmm. by default. And I think the child actually makes the decision. Mm. So I don't really think the mother or the stepfather or stepmother actually makes the decision. I think what happens is the child comes to a comfortability level where they look to you as their second parent now or their third, you know, outside of like co-parenting phases, but they now look to you like you're a parent figure in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they fuck with you enough. There's kids like that still won't call, you know, their mom or dad's significant other stepmom, stepdad, and don't fuck with them enough to ever do that, honestly. Right. Um, so I think it's really the child's comfortability level, uh, especially until marriage for them to be like, nah, I fuck with you. You're my, you're like, nah, you're my stepdad or you're my stepmom. Right. And that was kind of the situation like with us, like Amaya was just like, we'll go place in Maya, be like, yeah, my mom and my stepdad on her own. Nobody told her to do that, but she looks at Jay as her father figure in her life. And that's the title that she wants him to be. And she's made that very clear. Like, yeah, I need you guys to get married. So <laughs> like she makes it very clear. So I think that's really the comfortability of the child. Makes sense. The mother co-signing saying that's okay. And of course, depending on your co-parenting situation, if the other co-parent is party, you know, is active and plays a significant role that they understand what's going on as well. So they're not offended if you guys have that relationship. Right. Um, yeah. Like I think, I think it's up to the child. Do I don't you, think it's really up to anybody. Do, how do you, uh, like how does the, how does that affect the decision making in like a co-parenting situation? As far as like if their father mm -hmm. wants one thing to go mm -hmm. and then the stepdad wants another thing. And again, this is not really <clears throat> pertaining to us part partially, maybe a little bit, but not mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. But I only ask this question because I remember when I posted the, uh, the Amaya's, um, business or whatever, mm -hmm. somebody was like, be careful when you say we're a stepdad. Cause then you, you put yourself in a whole nother situation. You just mm -hmm. want to be careful of, because mm -hmm. you know, children have feelings yeah. and things like yeah. that. So, but I'm like, wait, is this really something that people are talking about? Right. Like, that's, I right. mean, shit, no, well, that's my you know, stepdaughter. I, yeah, it is a big deal because, like, I don't know if you've seen the situation with uh, Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats of how they're having a whole issue because the baby, his baby mother does not care for the relations with Alicia Keys and her daughter and doesn't like her calling her stepmom or the name that she gave Alicia Keys, which is Umi, which means, like, mama in another language. Mm -hmm. um, she's really not pleased with it. Went on a whole rant on Instagram. So it's really actually, it is a good question to ask because, excuse me, people do have a problem with it. People are not the happiest about their kid having another parent next to them, like another mom or another dad. Like, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes it can come from a petty, bitter place though, too. So that's why it really just, it just really depends on the situation. Right? right. So like, you know, again, like in our situation and just being transparent for the camera, Amaya's biological father just not is not in the picture in that way right so i don't have the hassle of having to run anything right. by him in that way you know what i'm saying he respects the type of mother i am so he doesn't like try to like overstep that anyway because he knows the role he plays but he doesn't overstep those boundaries like he couldn't tell me if that was okay or not mm -hmm. some have it different though some have a healthier not to say that's unhealthy or healthy, but some people do have a healthier co-parenting situation where the father is very active, so they do have a lot of say in what goes on. So I think that's where, if that is the case, that means that you have done the work of having the father and the stepfather be heavily acquainted Makes where sense. they have their own conversation that that is okay. So like, you know what I mean? The hardest question, right? Mm -hmm. To me, honestly, to and when you say a step-parent, mm -hmm. does that role diminish or is that role done when a relationship is done what do you mean of like if you're somebody's step parent right mm -hmm. so because i guess step would be like you mm -hmm. step into their life mm -hmm. or you step up to their life so yeah. 
if the role between those two mm -hmm. people are done, does the role of the step parent finish? Is that so? Is, who, does is it done when for the child and the adult? I think it shouldn't be, um, and I th I think that way because you cannot like. That's why it's really important. Like you can't, you have to be dating with purpose and you really do have to get in situations that you do believe is going to have longevity to it, even if it doesn't, because that way you're not introducing things that can cause a, uh, some type of trauma to the kid mm -hmm. of another people person's being life. In a, right in another person's <clears throat> life. So the reason why I say it should be is because say if, you know, God forbid we ended, right? Amaya respects you enough where you have been present enough in her life and instilled things in her, in her life where she's probably still going to expect that from you mm -hmm. like you know what I mean whether me and you are together or not you still have every right to you know parenting that's where people get it fucked up is because parenting is uh, the other side of parenting is a bond and a friendship right like so just because you're not active in her her daily day life or her family as like in as a family with her mom doesn't mean you can't be active with her as her friend in a bond that y'all have already built like you know what I mean so like for example like um, my brother's father um, he was in my life since I was like four and, um, he always treated me like his daughter. And even when him and my mom were done, he always made sure, called me on my birthdays, made sure we still had some form of bond. Now, when I got older, I chose to go my own routes and that's up to the child. You know what I mean? How that works out. But, you know, from youth ages, you couldn't tell me that wasn't my stepfather. I don't care if he was with my mom or not. Mm. And he held, upheld his end of the bargain by making sure that I knew that I was just as important to him, whether or not his mom, you know, my mom and him were together. Makes and sense. I think it just plays a, a very symbolic role because at that time, my father was incarcerated for a long time and he was there. Like, I looked to him like a father more than my own father. And to me, that means a lot. Like, you know what I mean? That means a lot to somebody who doesn't, have that it's like thank you for being here and thank you for always looking at me as not only just you know a stepchild but your child, your child. Right. like regardless like you know like people say like things like it takes a village it really does like it's not like you know this just has to be this or this like blended families are a real thing because everybody's family is so different you cannot tell people what to or how to like you know mm -hmm. what i mean you just do what is the most healthy for the child that plays so that they aren't harmed in a way of crushed feelings hurt feelings feeling like damn you just up and left them because you don't want to you know you're done with my mom or you're done with my dad but what about me i didn't do anything mm. like you know what i mean nobody thinks about like wow the kid didn't even do anything and then they have to watch this split and then be felt like they now are abandoned for whatever reason no that was some real shit though Definitely had to touch on that. Uh, can we start? I guess we're gonna do it kind of different, maybe. Um, what we at? What we at? What we at? We're not into what's popping right now. Okay. We can get into like some questions, so, I guess. Maybe. All right, let's do it. All right. So, um, what are you leaving in 2019? What am I leaving in 2019? You know, I don't even know. Um, so what I'm leaving in 2019, I probably would say is hesitation mm. and i say that because like i'll get like really good ideas or things that i want to do but i'm always like hesitant or because i find reasons of why i can't make it happen or like why it might be unrealistic at this moment um and I think sometimes we create our own form of hesitation it's not even real it's just that normal self-doubt that we're programmed to already say to ourselves but just not hesitate just go for it just do it you know there's a couple things that i i'm trying to get done in the early 2020 and um i am already just taking these steps to just make sure we're not hesitating in 2020 we're going Facts. for it hesitation you leaving that um, leaving hesitation what you I doing mean, what you doing what you leaving in 2019 uh, me nah absolutely not i'm not what am i leaving not really, really leaving anything, but what I'm, what I'm trying to gain in 2020 is just being able to, uh, just being able to my follow up, follow up, following up with people, mm -hmm. um, perfecting my craft. I'm trying to do everything to enhance who I am as a business person Love it. and as uh, just as a brand. So I want to definitely follow up more. I want to um, continue to 
practice, continue yeah. to get better at everything I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but I definitely that follow up thing and like just that's one of the things I definitely want to uh, enhance. Enhance, in right, right? So you're not leaving anything, just enhancing. I mean, yeah, I'm not really. I mean, any, any bad habits? I'm pretty sure that it's bad habits, but it's not like a 2019 to 2020 thing. It's right, really it's something just that like, okay. Hopefully, I can get better. Mm -hmm. Continue to be open minded. Mm -hmm. Continue to uh, have a, be accountable and things yeah. like that. I actually hate that question. Like resolutions, yeah. I don't. I'm not really big on resolutions either, just because like I feel like it just is forcing you to pick something to prioritize when just really like you know what the fuck you need to do. Yeah, I, like and I, it, whether it's 2020, 2019, 20. 21 you know what the fuck you need to do no you're right I'm, I'm actually mad that i asked that question i don't even know why we put that okay, let's <laughs> we could just skip that can we go straight to the topic? no hesitation my bad bro i was you i'm sorry alex i'm always doing that to alex <laughs> you know because it's feel like it was like so scripted like what do you I, my bad <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the shits man god damn we talking about what we leaving like i mean body. but i, Niggas I gonna like be listening still to that wasn't my question oh <laughs> that was definitely that was 2019 Man, listen, niggas gonna be listening. Niggas wow, yeah, it was. So that was your question because you told me that earlier. But yeah, I don't even care about neither one. It's All not right, because like, we won't be Fuck listening. It. Like twenty twenty, we just who we are. Yeah, we're we'll getting better. Yeah. Period, poo. Gang, gang. Hey. All right, so can we uh start getting to the shit? Because I feel like what's up with this Drake interview, man? <sighs> yeah. Um. How you feel about Drake? All right, Drake. Here we go. Look, I mean Drake who had his kids from the kids from the world will hold the world for the kids. <laughs> First of all, I fuck with the interview. Loved and it's it. been how long has it been? A couple days. When did it come out? I think it came out like damn near the night of Christmas or the day before. Which one? Uh, like so when? it's been a couple days. So my my initial thought on a Drake interview was this is so dope because the nigga is being OD transparent. When's the last time he did an interview? I don't know. Two thousand nine, maybe. Sheesh. So like Drake don't you know the greats don't do no. Yeah, I was about to say like people on his caliber don't do interviews. So I thought it was dope from that standpoint. I thought it was dope that he was he was very relatable. Like. I, I think I was like, you could tell that he's young. Yeah. Because his answers were my answers. But at the same time, that's why I think part of me feels like he could have did without this interview. Because I think a lot of times, like, when you're so open, you give people an opinion of you that they it really wouldn't matter because mm -hmm. you're in that light, right? So I, um, to, to say that, <clears throat> when the things he was saying about, like, uh, Pusha T... It's just like he was throwing blows. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's just like it's like Scorpio blows. But I love, but like, I, it's like I love it I because loved it. it's like he's human. Like you know what I'm saying, anybody gonna feel like that? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like ah, <laughs> you know. So I, I mean, I loved it. You know, Drake is young. He's 33, so he's very relatable to us. He's not Jay Z is old. Like, come on, like Jay Z is what 52? He just turned. Was it? Yeah, old? I think he. Just, Damn, yeah, 52? I think Jay Z just turned fifty two or did fifty. He, did he, did he just, just turn fifty? Yeah. Drake is thirty three years old. He's very much us. Like you right. know what I mean. Um, what I liked about it is like I love the fact that he gave people answers to the questions that we like, ask about him yeah, all like, the time. Yeah, 100%. and the thing is like people have their perception regardless. Like no matter what he does, there's always wilding in the comments. No matter what he speaks about, it's always something. And I think that answering these lays some of it to rest, regardless. Yeah. It might give other people opinion, or some people are like, see, I knew that. So, you know, some people might say oh, this, but that's fine because the people who wanted the answer, who, do, who does view it how he views it, they gonna stand regardless. It, it shows, I fuck with it. It shows that he's he's definitely tapped in. Like you you hear these um these celebrities, they're like, nah, I don't really pay attention to the comments. I don't really pay attention to the critics. You full of shit. Like, cause yeah. we know that shit hits you sometimes. Yeah. And the fact that he could be like, nah, man, I, I be that yeah. shit is frustrating. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The fact that he be like, I I, I think I do kind of mm -hmm. saying I care what people think of me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One thing I I didn't really, I thought it was like, um, I thought. It was like a contradiction. So they was asking him about Kanye West. Uh -huh. And he was saying that he thinks Kanye West is lying. That when he, like Kanye West, like, is nothing. He don't have no animosity towards Drake. He don't, he didn't do the, uh, mm -hmm. the Pusha thing. He mm -hmm. didn't sign Pusha T on purpose mm -hmm. because he didn't like Drake. Then you got Drake saying, no, he did do that. He did do that. He, yeah. th he thinks he did do it. Yeah. And then <clears throat> you'll hear how he's like, trying to mend these beefs or whatever, uh -huh. or like he, he is want to be uh -huh. all love. Uh -huh. But then when he asked about Kanye West, he's like, nah. So I uh, see Drake's a Scorpio like me. If you don't know, I'm a big Drake fan. Shit. So, and because of 
when he did that, I totally understood what he was doing. So you got to understand something, right? Just because I don't like, just because I don't like you, that doesn't mean there's any beef. Like right. that's one, right? So you could you could do something to me, and I just might not care for you. But I don't got no animosity. It's not no. I just I'm good. I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to mend it. I'm good, and I really do run my life like that. So like as far as him, you know, saying he thinks that Kanye does have a problem with him, he probably do. There's like sometimes like people don't have to. It's by people how they treat you and the things they do that we get our own perception. So right. yeah, you did some things that you can't possibly like me. There's, you can't possibly, or you possibly got something that you don't like. My and that's, and that's a, tea, like, that, I'm not signing no, push your teeth because of that's another what, man. No, but I don't think that's why he's saying that's the only reason why. I think that was a reason why, but I don't think that's the only reason why he thinks that Kanye just has some type of animosity for him. Now, I also and think that it's okay. Song, I also think that's it's very much okay if he's okay with mending with certain people, but then he doesn't want to mend with him because sometimes things are a dead end. Right. So if we could try to mend it all we want, that animosity is still going to be there somewhere hidden around. Sometimes I don't want that hidden energy just laying around. Like, let's just, we good. Like, nah, I'm good on mending with you. I ain't got no problem. He, I love the fact that he said he's still very much an inspiration in my life. Like, he's still one of my very artists. If I have to separate Jay-Z and, and these things, he's still a favorite artist of mine. But I'm good on him. And I'm, like, that is literally how I am. Like, yeah. to a T. But, like, but when you, I feel like he's pushing this, not agenda, but he's he's saying things like, yeah, I want to, Um, he don't want any beefs. He don't want to go into a... It's not a beef. But it, I ain't beefing <laughs> with you. I just don't want to be friends. What's wrong with that? Nothing, I, I think guess. that's the problem. Like, people always think that you got to be, if you don't got beef, then why we can't be friends? Because I just don't want to be friends. Like, I don't need you in my circle. I don't need you in my energy. I don't care. Like, I don't want to be friends. I'm okay. Like, some people don't want to be friends with people they got to question. You get what I'm saying? I don't want to be friends with people that I got to second guess if you got some problem I with I just me. feel like Kanye, no, West, Kanye West is doing, moving in the a, in a, in a steps to move forward into to get over it when he's clearly just holding, he's harboring feelings that he has. And even in the song, they said, what are those songs directed he to Kanye? He said, yeah, because he, he said, no yeah, bitch. So, like, yeah, it's that's not what about, I said. It's not, it's not about being a bitch. You, you introduced that almost, kind of. It's like you this introduced This is so perfect. This is so perfect because Kanye's a Gemini like you. Drake is a Scorpio but, like me. But even still. And this exactly makes but even, so much sense. But even still, me. like, even this, I'm not biased with it because I first came in. I said, I love the interview. I said, That's I, I'm, a, I'm a Drake you fan. Like how, you don't like how you're doing Kanye. No, I don't have nothing to do with Kanye. It's about him saying that you're saying one on one on one end. I just like the consistency. No, I want to be consistent. All right, but certain on things one are end, circumstantial. There could be consistency and still be circumstances where, you know what, that doesn't work here. Like, right. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Like, okay. that's not okay? It is. I'm just saying for me. For like, I don't think he's being a contradiction. I think he's being real. I think he's being real by saying, like, nah, I don't want to be friends with him. I ain't got no problem with him. And, so, like, if... And, he and, didn't and, say and that, we, though. He, he yeah. didn't say... He didn't say... I, he he said, to, I don't have no he, issue well, with you, but he tried I do to, think he has a personal issue with me. But underlying. don't you can't do that. Why because, can't I? Because, I could think that that's listen, whatever. Like, why can't it be? What did Kanye give off for him to think he don't like him? I'm not saying none of that. All I'm why can't it be that? All I'm saying is... Kanye didn't make the song about Drake. Drake made a song about Kanye. But he and again, told the man he had a whole kid. Kanye he didn't like, say that. He said it on the interview that Kanye told Pusha that. That's where put everybody knows that's where Pusha got the information from. Okay. All right. All right. When he when purposely he was not supposed to do that. Okay. All I'm saying is So all I'm saying is if you know that, if you're pushing this positive and being friends what with everybody. What makes him not be positive about because that? Because if Kanye West, that's he where didn't people have a got it fucked up. Like if people Kanye think West... positive people always have to be just the most loving to everybody. Like we have to take everybody into our space. Like we have to forgive everybody. No, the fuck we don't. We can be positive and still have, possess the authority to be like, you got me fucked up. Everybody knows that. I can still be positive and be like, but I don't fuck with y'all. I can still be positive. Like it doesn't make me have to completely transform and limit my boundaries to you because. I'm positive. Like, let me let me step over my boundaries so I do this so that I look like we're bad. No, like nobody has to do that. That doesn't make you positive. It doesn't make you negative. It makes you human. Like, I don't have to. I don't have just just because I don't want to. I don't have to. And I think people need to understand that. But and I don't even care that much to keep. Wow. It. Like, because I just gave all this and then now he don't care. Nah, now, but now we can't debate. All right. We are the podcast. We're we, done potting. End we, the podcast, yo. We are debating. End it's the just, podcast, yo. I just feel like when it's something he wants to talk about, then it's like, <laughs> right, of course. I said, now, I just, now, now we talking now. Now he don't want to talk about it. All right. Go I'm saying I don't care. All right. Let's talk about tank fight. How you feel about that? 
Talk about your man from your city. Come on, let him. Let me. I, I'm gonna say what you said yesterday. So you come gonna, on. You wanna let me talk about it? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I don't give a fuck about this fight. All right. So look, what I'm saying yeah. is, uh, I think uh, Tank. <sighs> did they say do you had a, a, a torn Achilles? What did they say? A, was it ruptured? S- supp- allegedly, he has a ruptured yeah, Achilles. Yeah, because I don't believe that shit until I see the doctor's note. I'm sorry, I need to see the doctor's slip. But I think, um, I think Tank. What happens if you do see it? Ah oh, man, Sheesh. see, it's already. Sorry I feel like people. Yeah, I feel like people were expecting Tank to not do it out way faster. I think it's he's they 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 expected him to dominate that fight way more than he did. Yeah. Like, dude was not supposed to be in the ring with Tank at at the end of or 12 rounds. He shouldn't have been in a 12-round fight with Tank. No way in hell. Um, I think he definitely got a he, – he did move up, so you never know. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it is a difference. He moved from 130 to 135, so it might be a major difference. You know what I'm saying? In the, in the competition. And I think he just got a – it's a learning experience. I think he's going to be all right, but – I think it's going to be some backlash. I think a lot of people had a lot of shit to say. Well, you know, it is what but it is. But he did look tired, though. He, was, he looked tired. He be in a club. He needs to stay out these motherfucking clubs, fuck around with these bitches, and he needs some more work. He needs to get his ass in the gym. He had a 38-year-old man running him around till the 10th round. Let me tell you something. A bitch 15, year old, 15 years older than me beats me. I'm crying. Period. I'm crying. How are you? What? What? Nah, I feel no, you. 48. What is he? 38? He was 38. He, was 38. Yeah, he, was 38. he might as well be 48. Shit. Tank's Tank 25. 25. Yeah, yeah. He ain't Floyd at 25. <sighs> yeah. All right, now. I, mean, Floyd, yeah, I wonder what Floyd had to say about this. Now, granted, you know, congrats to his win. That's still great. Yeah, he he got still won. He got, he got what done. he was supposed to do done, but he needs to be in a gym. I don't want to see him doing nothing else but be working out. For the next 365 days. Yeah, I just, I, I just, when I was looking at it, I was just like, damn, why is this man in the 12th round with Tank? Like, that's all I'm thinking, like, man, fuck it. But, again, he knocked him out. He got the job done. So, shout out to the city. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to shout Baltimore. Shout out to the city. Also, the fact that he just, Tank is doing some phenomenal things, though. You know, yeah. I definitely think he's a very much of a stand-up guy, despite, like, you know, his relationship issues that comes in the blogs, fuck all that. As far as the community and what he does for his city, I think really much speaks about the type of man he is. Um, I think one was he brought 30 kids to Atlanta yeah, to come see his show. Baltimore. That's an opportunity that probably nine out of 10 of them would have never had. Mm-hmm. And I think that is phenomenal for giving them that experience, being able to be there with him while he's on this journey. I think that's dope. The other one was... He paid for uh, Destiny funeral the girl that she got killed uh and she was a entrepreneur yeah she, she did hair she sold hair and had her own salon her 21 own salon. years old people ran up in her, in her salon and killed her in front of her daughter he paid for he paid for their um funeral so shout out to destiny yeah r.i.p to yeah it's just crazy because yeah. like boston was just yeah oh man shit yeah. be crazy it is, but yeah, I do have some positive influences like Tank. So we do shout out to all the people putting on positive, you know, for the city because we need y'all. Like, you know, for the sure. more y'all do, the more it matters. Don't let them tell y'all that it matters. The city ain't shit. Y'all got to keep doing it because it clearly needs you. So shout out to Tank for that. Like, I really, I really fuck with that. Like, that's right. dope. So, I mean, but when it comes to boxing, baby boy, get your ass at the gym. You look tired. Yeah, but I mean that was his first time going past round nine, so of but a course thirty-eight year old. Yeah, I ain't trying to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I you guess it's not saying? even. It's nothing. I you can know, I'm proud of you, but you know, get your shit together, bro. Yeah. Period. Shout out to my guy Tank. Man. <laughs> Shout out because he putting on for the city, so that's definitely putting on for the city. Yeah. Putting um, on for Maryland. Vic Ma- Merlin. What? Merlin. He putting on for who? Maryland. No. It was a lot of. First of all, don't do him like that. Because it was a lot of people in Maryland that was that was rooting for him. Yeah, DC, I know. Shout DC out to them. was rooting for them. Yeah, but he's like not. Maryland was rooting. I'm saying he putting on for Baltimore, but he putting on for Maryland in general. People fucking with Tank here in Baltimore and outside the city. Yeah, yeah of so course. shout out I'm, to them too. I'm because, not saying they didn't. Yo, not, they I'm not from, fucking with him. I went to Silver Spring High School in, in Silver Spring, Maryland, and they should, they was rooting for that man. I'm not saying that. So I'm just saying. to say, thank you for putting it on. Period. Nationally, what's oh, up, Vic Mensa? Uh, <laughs> 
I don't like your attitude on the podcast today. What? You can sit this shit out. I can run a show by myself. Clearly. Clearly, because you ain't got no <laughs> rap, no nothing. You skipping past topics. Not oh, I didn't. I, we can, I, I went from. We could, we could sit. Jay off his, I don't know. He's tired. I'm, I'm not sorry. tired. He needs some milk. Oh, my God. She is. She she trying, she's, trying, she's trying to bully her way on the podcast. All right, look, I said Vic Mensa. That was that was next. I mean, you actually, if you want to be technical, you skipped around. But I mean, you, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, my shit say Tank next. Let me show you. Let me see. See, Drake. That's not tank. even what we looking at. This is the list, Jay. I sent you this. I didn't get that one. This is the list I had. So I was right on time. What I what I said. So go to your list. Vic Mensa, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vic makes a, uh so what we <coughs> we were talking about right, so he, he had a, he had an interview and um he was basically saying that they got as rappers they have to be more accountable for their words. What you think? I agree with him. Like well, is that shit gonna sell? And what you gonna think, rap about okay, so getting straight this, A's? Here, Nobody won't hear that shit. All right, so I think that everybody just has to do a better job. Because, like, you could say that, but then you have your J. Coles that are doing just fine. Facts, now you're right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think that it does come a time, and I really do agree with him, when people do have to be accountable for the things they say. Like, at the end of the day, you probably didn't ask to be this star, but your love was to rap or be this figure. You want to be famous. You want to have the money. And I think once you reach that status, you got to understand now that comes with another layer of responsibility because you have kids and people who want to be just like you. Mm -hmm. So every way that you carry yourself and I, and I'm speaking to all of them, not just even the rappers, like girls like city girls and even Megan, like I love all of them dearly. I think they're all great artists and I think they're doing their thing. But when you think about the things that they are promoting and you got to understand that the younger generation is running the music industry, that's who's streaming on their stuff. Think about somebody who goes to sleep to listening to them like you don't remember when you used to be young and you used to put your headphones yeah, on nah, I but sleep to sleep the music like, 50 cent. like think up think about it like all these things that are getting placed in them and the things that they think are cool and that what they're showing them to be cool yes and i think yes when we talking about drugs that is a major stigma in the rap industry like that's what they do like you're not rapping if you ain't in the booth smoking a j right popping yeah. pills drinking Codeine, like you're not a, a rapper because that's what they do and it's like who who says like nah we go we ain't got to do that to do that like, i mean i feel like you, have a, you got a balance because you do have people that rap about uh like you say you got j Cole's, you got the kendrick's that don't rap about doing drugs and none of that but then you have to have those who do rap about it too mm -hmm. i feel like if it's all one way but right because there's people who relate to that side yeah i'm not you know what i'm saying but <laughs> Like you said, I think that people do have to. I'm not saying that they should. Yeah, I'm not saying that they should promote it. I'm not I, saying I promote understand that drugs. I'm just saying like but they do. That's what it is. Like no matter if they're rapping about it, you're promoting it. Like you, you condone it. Like you know what I'm saying. But like I think that it, it's fucked up because like some of these rappers when, when are it, coming just from entertainment because you make a movie. Just mm -hmm. because you make a movie that's that got to do with slavery don't mean if you're the producer of that movie that don't mean you condone slavery. It's just entertainment. When, right. when why? But it's hard to decipher for kids. Like, see, a movie. I think I think they even look at movies as more movies than entertainment. Not being more closer to relating to them. Maybe they if that should. Makes sense. Maybe they should uh, have. You know how movies have um, uh, is like rated R or rated PG. They do. Isn't that like explicit? Well, I it, guess that just covers cuss words. So yeah. So maybe they need to have ratings for music whereas though you can't listen or you're not supposed to listen to this music or and I, that probably or, don't work or we could go deeper what the fuck is up with their parents yeah i mean like not seriously because like there's things like like even like amaya gets introduced to that we let her know like this is for adults like in the minute that you think you can step out of that that means you're telling me that you're grown right and you're not grown you right. get what i'm saying so you know I, again like we could put it all on the artist but like you know something that like i recall Cardi B saying like she was like I was never trying to be nobody's role model mm. like you know what I'm saying like and a lot of them aren't like they're not coming into this like they coming in here to get to the bag and rap and do what they wanted to do their whole life like you know what I'm saying and I feel bad for some people who really is in the gutter like that come out the gutter that come out the hood like and they getting on but they from the hood they really do do drugs ride with guns and do all these things and then they don't expect to be anybody's role model like and if anything their role model is giving back to their city because they made it out fine um so you know when i have to think about it like that then i do have to put it on the parents because i'm like you then give you have to teach your kids that not to idolize or glorify 
entertainment like right. you have to tell them that this is entertainment like don't think none of that shit is real because a lot of that shit is going to put you in jail or in a body bag so understand that that's entertainment you know what i mean like mm -hmm. no nah, you're right and uh, but you like a lot of people do come from poverty and speaking of that we'll be talking about uh, cardi b's crib yo because you was like that shit yo. is stupid that crib is nice. That That's, shit is huge. You know, I, is I do want to hear. Necessary though. I do want to hear some more music from her. I get she's living her life, and you're about here buying houses and stuff. But I need another Cardi album. I thought you don't even like Cardi B. I need her to still put on like the the all the riffraff she did with my girl Nikki. I need to see. Come on, follow up with something so I can make it know it was worth it. She don't it. even need to do that. I need to know it was worth it. It yes, is. Look what she did already. What? She what did, did she a hell, hell of a lot. Great. Keep going. Oh my God. The she, fuck? Shout out to you Cardi B. Shout out to her house and her marriage and her cheating ass man, all that shit. But make another album, bro. Like, I'm tired of fucking seeing her so much have shade, a grand bro. time. Put a fucking album out, bitch. Yeah, like, yeah. she had this baby early. You know, culture's cute as hell. But I wanna fucking see some more music out of you. I wanna see 12 years out of Cardi. And that's a compliment. Like, we wanna see time out of you. That's a compliment. Give me some fucking time. Lovely house. You ain't about to. Let me sleep over, so give me a fucking album. <laughs> like, Straight like, up. Like, like, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh man, what about um what about uh Hmm What? <laughs> I'm mad. Why Next. are you mad? Because you want to I need some music, yo. Mm. Cause she be banging when she bang, you know what I'm saying? I always gave her that credit. Of course I'm a Nicki Minaj fan, everybody knows that. But every time I see her come out here buying something on a trip culture on her hip i'm like bitch you put your come give me an album shit so this 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 jody turner smith <laughs> <laughs> chick that's the chick from queen of slim that's, that's the queen. main the main that is queen and she dated a white dude mm. i mean i understand what movies are entertainment what y'all got to say i mean he's from montgomery county <laughs> oh shit! shout out to dude interesting uh i don't know oh, i'm in the queen ghetto is from montgomery county oh, oh that makes sense there. I'm in, a, I'm in the ghetto. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so no, but uh, I think uh -huh. um, I mean I don't know. You could, I don't like a lot of shit. I don't be so, caring about because me, I'm just pro black. Like you know what I'm saying, like it's crazy because like you know I've seen a lot of people saying, well, if this was a white girl and a black guy, this would have got a lot more. You know, it would have been a bigger thing. What you mean? Like if the black guy was with a white girl, about to marry a white girl. Instead of, I guess there's always this like dive, like this. I thought it split was off thing. when a girl marries a white guy, but when a black guy. Boy, I thought a white it was girl. a thing though. No, it is, but I think I think like a lot of people were saying if it was a black guy with dating a white girl, it would have got way more bashed than it is. But because she's a female, she's getting less of the backlash versus you know somebody coming out I mean, with a white. You do what queen. you want at the end of the day. You get what I'm saying, but I mean, me when um, I do it, I it just threw me off because I watch Queen and Slim. And it's like bow, and I'm like. You're dating a cop. Like, right. <laughs> it's kind of like fucking with me. I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm scared. Like, you know, so, but I, you know, I'm not like, I'm pro black. So that means I'm pro creation of more black individuals like myself. 100%. So, like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I completely condone mixed racial babies. However, I'm not against love. Like, who you love is who you love, you know, but I would rather her be with a black man. Right. That's my preference. Sorry. Well, shout out to Sorry. them, man. Do what you want. Uh, Jay just got, he's blowing me. He's just gliding through type. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about that. Next, I mean, I, next, next, bow. I, so what, is one of these next things something you care about? Let's talk about something you care about. What's up? That was it. I think we done. What the fuck? What type of interview? What type of potting was this today? I mean, we probably had like what? One what? 105. We had 105. Mm -hmm. We did pretty good. All right, y'all. <laughs> well, well that, happy fucking New Year. Happy New Year's. Babe, what's that New Year's plans? Um, I'm working from 7 to 2. I, you told me 7 to 12. I'm working from 7 to 2. To 2. You did tell me too. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you did tell me you work in 7 to 2. That's right. Right. <laughs> so, Why well, you not going to be with me? I, I said, yeah, you want to come? I said, I will go to the studio. I will be at 93.9 with you to bring in 12 o'clock. And then I thought we was going to go to a New Year's party. Yeah. We'll fuck around and do that. Oh. That's it. Why? Happy New Year. 2020 Yo. is on the way. It's on Tuesday. It's on Wednesday. When, when, January 1st is on Wednesday. Damn. We're in a whole new decade. 
Listen, man. What did you learn in your decade? What did I learn? In your 10 years, the last 10 years, 10 years of your life, what is something you took away from your last 10 years that you can give to your next generation or your next legacy? What can you say? The last 10 years of my life, you I have learned this damn table about. You can hear it in the mic. You ain't talking enough in the mic, so I'm about to hit you. I tried. Um, but not what I learned. Patience is not um, it's not a cliche. It's, it's a real thing. Oh, I like that. Like you gotta be, you really gotta be patient, and that's really one of the biggest things I've learned. Mm-hmm. Patience is not a cliche. It's mm-hmm. a real thing. Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, 007 Gemini Scorpio Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Make sure. Well, see, uh, clearly Jay didn't really want to pod today. So I did want to we'll pod. We'll talk I was to you guys on time. Sunday. And make sure you follow us. And make sure, you know, we do have a donate button. So make sure that you do go ahead and, you know, support the cause. Donate, you know, minimum 99 cents, whatever you may like. You know, we are a growing podcast on our journey, and we're looking to expand and get better. So make sure you support if you with the if you with the shits. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Gemini's right. will be a podcast. We out. Yeah.